grade 8 math number 10.1a. In this chapter, we're talking about transformations and similarity. We're going to be covering the properties of dilations. And in this one, we're exploring dilations. Look at this. See these pictures of Emma? Those are dilations of Emma. So what's a dilation? Well, it's a transformation that changes the size, but not the shape of a figure. You look at your eyes, you have pupils. They're right in the very center of your eye, right there. And they're going to get bigger if you go into a dark room because that helps you let more light in. When it closes tiny, that means you're in a very sunny place, so less light can get in. That's pupil dilation. It's opening and closing and getting bigger and smaller. The shape of your eye doesn't change, just the pupil dilates. See? So if you can see these pictures of Emma, here's our center of dilation, and this line is going across her head, and this line is going across her feet. So those are the two points for the top and the bottom of Emma. And each picture is the same, it just gets bigger. See? The size changes. So each replica or copy of Emma is a dilation. Unlike the other transformations of translations, reflections, rotations, Dilations do change the size, but not the shape. So remember in translations, they slid, and the size and shape didn't change, and the orientation didn't even change. In the reflections, the size and shape didn't change, but the orientation did change. Same with rotations. The size and shape did not change, but the orientation did. Well, now with these dilations, the size is going to change, okay, but not the shape. She's still in the same shape, okay? So every dilation has a fixed point called the center of dilation. And it's located where the lines connected similar or corresponding parts intersect with each other. So her head and feet are touched by this line, and they go down to this center of dilation. And it actually would continue on like that across it. See that? That's where they meet. Dilations change the size, but not the orientation or shape of an object, okay? And dilations are labeled with prime notation, just like the other transformations. So if you look at Emma here, she's got points A for her head, B for this hand, C for that leg, D for that leg, and E for that hand. And in the dilation, that becomes A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, E prime, just like with the other transformations we did in the last chapter. And this one becomes a double prime, B double prime, C double prime, C, because the two little tick marks, okay? So, let's take a look at these triangles that I drew here. You can see triangle X, Y, Z, and X prime, Y prime, Z prime. And C, the center of dilation, is right here at point A. So, Triangle X prime Y prime Z prime is a dilation of triangle X Y Z. This one is a dilation of this one. Point A is the center of dilation. So the first thing we're going to do is use a, a ruler to measure the point from here to here, this line AX. Then we're going to measure AY and then we're going to measure AZ. So we get our little trusty ruler, and we use millimeters, these little tiny guys on this side, okay? From zero to one is one centimeter, but the little tiny lines in between here are millimeters. And we measure the line from A to Z here, see? Then we measure from a to x prime. So we measure from a to x prime and a to y prime and a to z prime. So we measured from here to here and wrote down our values. I'm sorry, from here to here and wrote down our values. And then we measure from here to here and write down our values. We do it to the mil nearest millimeter. We don't write it in millimeters. We don't have to. We can write it in centimeters. But if we know to the mil mil nearest millimeter, we know we've got 11.5 centimeters, okay? That would be 115 millimeters, all right? So we've got our measurements. 
from A to X is 15 centimeters, okay? And from A to Y is 11.5 centimeters, and from A to Z is 17 centimeters. Now, we measure from A to X prime. A to X prime is 30. Ooh, look at that, it's two times that one. A to Y prime is 23. Well, 11 plus 11 is 22, and a half and a half is 1, so that's 23. And A to Z prime is 34, from A to Z prime. And look, 17 times 2 is 34. When we write them as fractions, AX over, I'm sorry, AX prime over AX is 30 over 15, that equals 2. AY prime over AY is 23 over 11.5, that equals 2. And AZ prime over AZ equals 34 over 17, that's also 2. It was all in proportion, wasn't it? The ratios of all of them equal 2. The distances are proportional. Now the second thing we do is measure the corresponding side lengths of the triangle. So we're going to measure X prime, Z prime, and if we use our trusty ruler here and we measure x prime, z prime like this, we get 16 centimeters. And if we measure from x to z, this one, we measured this green one right here, x prime to z prime. Then we measured this one, x to z. And that was 8. So now we've got 16 over 8, and that's a 2. Then we measure x prime, y prime, and we see we got an 11 when we measured it with the ruler. Then we measure x, y, and see what we get. We got 11, and x, y was 5.5, .5, so that's 11 over 5.5. .5, that equals 2. Then we measured y prime, z prime, and that equaled 12 right here, measuring this bottom one, and we compared it to this one. And that ended up as a 12 over a 6, and that was a 2. So the ratios for the sides of the triangles are all 2, and the side lengths are proportional. Hmm. Now, the last thing we do is measure the corresponding angles of the triangle. So we got our trusty, hang on one second. So we're going to measure the corresponding angles of the triangles. We measure x prime, and we lay this here. And we got 45 degrees. We measured X, and we got 45 degrees. We measured Y prime and got 85 degrees. It was not quite 90. We measured Y and got 90, uh, 85 degrees, I'm sorry. So not quite 90. And Z prime was 50 degrees. And z was 50 degrees. So the angles were all congruent. Our conjecture, which is an opinion based on partial information. Conjecture, you don't have all the information. So you make an opinion based on not quite having all the information. So our conjecture is that they're similar triangles. When figures have the same shape but different sizes, they're called similar. Corresponding sides are proportional. Corresponding angles are congruent. And a figure in its dilation will have the same orientation. See? Wouldn't you say they have the same orientation? They're both kind of faced like that, coming on an angle. And they're in proportion to each other. See? All their measurements are in proportion because of the little fraction ratios we did. See? Okay, we're going to continue on talking about dilations. And we're going to move on to... 10.1b, and we're going to talk about dilations on a coordinate plane, okay? I hope this was helpful. I know these are a lot of new terms for you, but just whenever you come across a new term, like the term dilation, link it to something that you do know about, like eyes dilating, okay? All right, I'll see you next video. Bye.